Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing with chapter four. Uh, chapter four. The chapter has four important parts. The first one is the lump system approach. Very easy equation, but inside the body we cannot calculate temperatures at different positions. That approach can be used when the build number is typically smaller than 0.1. And it, that means that the internal resistance would be 10 times smaller than the convective resistance on the outside. The second approach was to look at one-dimensional heat transfer in long plane walls, long cylinders and spheres. And the most important thing to remember, it is one-dimensional. Then we've looked at infinite bodies, semi-infinite bodies. And on that body, there must be a plane on which we want to determine the temperature very close to the body, but very, very importantly is that the temperature of the body remains constant. It doesn't change. The fourth part is now multidimensional problems. Now we want to solve two-dimensional and three-dimensional problems. And what we're going to do is all the other work that we've used, except the lump system approach is being used as building blocks and we use the principle of superposition to solve the heat transfer in two-dimensional and three-dimensional bodies. Right, now with the previous lecture we had a block of ice okay, and um, although I've warned you how easily you can get confused, I myself got confused during the lecture. <laughs> And over the weekend, I thought about it a lot in terms of, you know, how can I prevent this and how can I make this uh, more clear to you? Because there is really a, quite a catch in it and it's very easy to miss. Okay. And let's see if there are some of you today who do not miss that catch. Okay. Okay. Now, now, one of the things that I've did is to make it easier is I've changed the dimensions. Okay. Previously, we had two dimensions which were the same and that, was, that sort of contributed to making the problem more difficult. Okay? Although the intention of the author was that two of the terms will be the same, which would actually means that in the solution it will be easier. So what I'm going to do now is the block of ice will now be 120 millimeters, 200 millimeters and 140 millimeters. Again, it is on that same table and the problem states that we can assume that there's no heat transfer on that base. The temperature on the outside is 18, the heat transfer coefficient 12, and at T equals zero, that ice block is being put there, its temperature is minus 18, its K value 2.22, and its alpha value is equal to 0.124 multiplied by 10 to the minus seven. Right. Now previously we've said that, I mean, if we look at the solutions which are available in the textbook for a typical body like this, okay, then we cannot use that solution by, for example, putting in the coordinate system like that. And the reason for that is that that solution has specifically been derived for the outside temperatures and the heat transfer coefficients all around the body to be the same. And that is not the case here. We've got a boundary condition problem. Okay, boundary condition. Okay, now the previous lecture I've also showed you with the cylinder that we've solved, the symmetry which we can get. So this problem can be solved by actually now making the length double what it was previously. Okay, and although it is not possible, this thing is now sort of hanging in the air. Okay. In terms of the problem, like that. Okay. And this dimension now changes to 280. Okay. And this one will still be 200 and that one will be 120. Okay. And we have symmetry around that line. And now everywhere around the body, the boundary conditions are the same and therefore it will be possible to get a valid solution. And previously in table 4.5, the solution for this problem was the non-dimensionalized temperature at points X, Y, Z and T 
is equal to the solution in a plane wall as a function of xt multiplied by the non-dimensionalized temperature solution of a plane wall in the yt direction and then also the same in the z direction. Uh, and uh, let's call this equation one. And the solution for this equation, any one of these values of the plane wall. Okay. So just one of these terms. Okay. And again, if we make the assumption that tau is larger than 0.2, which means we only have to use the first solution in equal one. So then, the solution, and I'm going to use Psi now as a coordinate system, okay, Psi, and you're going to see why just now. So Psi would then be A, the constant before, multiplied by E to the lambda square tau cos lambda Psi and L. So Psi just indicates the direction, and it can be X, Y, or Z. So it is just a general equation. Okay. And what I did is, I'm not using A once and lambda once, because we've said we use N equal one, okay? And I want to use the one, the two, and the three for the directions one, two, and three, okay? Okay, so N equal one, would represent the solution in the x direction, okay. n equal 2, obviously the solution in the y direction, and n equal 3 would represent the solution in the z direction. Okay, and for that equation, the roots would then be lambda lambda is equal to the build number. You can solve it or you can get it from the table in the textbook. And the constant A is equal to 4 times the sin of 2 times lambda plus the sin of 2 times lambda. And in general, this would represent, obviously, any one of these terms, the solution in the Psi direction. Okay, take note of an infinite long plane wall. Okay, so very important, that is infinite in direction, and also in that direction. The plane wall, the depth of it is very large. Okay. So plane wall, that is typically what that solution would represent. Right. Now the non-dimensionalized temperature, the non-dimensionalized temperature is equal to the temperature that we want to solve, okay, minus uh, T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite. Okay. Okay, the temperature on the corner, I'm going to show it to you just now, the outside temperature, the initial temperature, and the environment temperature. Okay, now we want to know how long is it going to be before the corner temperature is zero. Okay, so zero minus the temperature on the outside is 18, divided by the initial temperature is minus 18 minus the temperature on the outside, and that gives us a non-dimensionalized temperature of 0.5.
Okay, now, this is my daughter who made this for me over the weekend. <laughs> From all the stationery, and this is now the problem that we're going to consider. Right? <laughs> 200 millimeters, right? Not 140, but we make it now 280, and in that, that direction, 120. Right? Okay. And our coordinate system is as according to in the textbook. So x is in that direction, z in that, uh, z in that direction, and y in that direction. <coughs> Let me just put them in here. x, z, Y. <coughs> right, Aaron, if you can just yeah, zoom in here on the box for in case <laughs> people on the video missed it. Right, so this is the ice block. Okay, actually it's standing like that on the table, but now we double the link so that we can get the solution. The coordinate system X, Z, and Y. Okay, 200 millimeters, 280, and 120. Okay, so very easy to see. Okay. So, let's look now at the three different terms. And again, I'm going to put them next to each other. Okay, yeah. Even before I do that, I'm going to write this solution, okay, this general solution that we have here. I'm going to write it as the non dimensionalized temperature as a function x, y, z, t is then equal to um, let's call it term 1 multiplied by term 2 multiplied by term 3. Okay. The three plane walls. That solution, that solution, and that solution. Okay. Where t1 Obviously, you can also use theta 1 or whatever you want to use, where T1 would then be equal to A1 e to the minus lambda 1 tau 1 cos lambda 1 x divided by L. You agree? Oh, sorry, lambda 1 squared. Okay, yeah. Okay. So the ones here doesn't represent only the first term of the solution. It's only for the first term. This, that's why I said it's not a case that I'm going to solve n equal 1, 2, 3, etc. We work only with the first term solution, and there are going to be three different ones of them. Okay. Right, and then the second one would then be equal to A2 e to the minus lambda 2 square tau 2 cos of lambda 2 multiplied by y divided by L. And T3 would be equal to A3 e to the minus lambda 3 square tau 3 multiplied by the cos of lambda 3 multiplied by z divided by L. Do you all agree? Okay. Now, there's just one more confusing thing, and that is the L's that we have in here. Okay. So in general, when we had a general solution like this, that would be for that distance to L. Okay. Okay. For the coordinate system C, that would be for that L. Okay. And now we've got different L's. So we have L1, we have L2, and L3. Okay. okay so that's the only re reason why I use n equal 1, 2, and 3 is to distinguish the three terms, and for each term, the a value, the lambda, and the tau's, and the x and the l values are different. They are not all the same. Okay. And with the previous problem, two of them were the same. 
Okay, so it doesn't help. Well. Okay, so now let's, uh, it would help if you can develop a column in your, in your book and, uh, or in your notes, and if you can divide it into three parts. Three different parts. <clears throat> okay, and the we are going to do it according to direction. And the three directions will be X, Y, and Z. Or then the case of N equal 1, the case of, well, not N equal 1, yeah, no, let me not use N. <laughs> uh, Let's just use one there, and a two there, and a three, third direction. Okay. Now let's look at the first one, the x direction. We need the solution for a plane wall. Okay? Now, what now? can complicate it is, remember, when we have this, and we want to know now in the x direction. Okay, so if that is the x direction, then we are interested in the heat transfer in that direction. So, if we now look at our ice block, I don't know if you can look at that, that is the x direction, you see. Where is the z direction? The z direction is there. And we are interested in getting the solution on that line there, AA. Okay? So, I'm very fancy. I even have A's. Okay? And the A's shouldn't be there, it should be over the center line, do you agree? Because it's on the axis, where they all cross. Like that. Okay? Right. <laughs> and we can see immediately, <laughs> very easy, that now that distance is 200. Okay? 200. So <laughs> 2 times L1 is 200, which means that L1 is equal to, well, let's not uh, use millimeters, let's use meters. 0.2. So 2L1 is 0.2 meters, L1 is equal to 0.1. Right. Now let's calculate the build number. So the build number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by L divided by K. Okay. The heat transfer coefficient has been given as 12. We have L divided by K, which has also been given. Okay. So if we work it out, then this build number is going to be equal to 0.5405. Okay. And let's call that build number 1. Right, now that we have the build number, okay. if we have the build number, we can get the roots of the equation. Okay. So that would give us lambda and A1, you can go and solve A1 also, and that would then give A1 is equal to 1.075, and lambda 1 is equal to 0 0.6751. Okay. And the non-dimensionalized temperature is equal to alpha t divided by L squared. Okay. So the non-dimensionalized temperature would be equal to lambda, uh, alpha, which is 0.124 multiplied by 10, Okay, to the minus 7 multiplied by T divided by L, in this case it is equal to 0 0.1 squared. Okay. And very importantly is we have to go 
and solve the temperatures where x is equal to uh, okay, sorry, let, let me write it like this. C okay, would be where x is equal to 0.1. That is the line AA. Okay, uh, I still have to continue with my three columns. So I'm still on the left hand side. Okay. Uh, and okay. Now with the, the solution of this equation, I'm going to separate it now to make it easier. Okay. This equation in general uh, has three important parts. The constant, the e to the something, and the cost part. You see? Okay. So let's just separate them so that you can see all of them. Okay, so A1, or A, would then be obviously A1, which is equal to 1.075. Okay. The next part is E to the minus something. Okay. And that would then be E, okay. if we look at that, minus lambda, which is 0.0. 6751 square multiplied by T. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, tau and tau is equal to. Um, that whole thing, 0.124 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7, multiplied by t and divided by 0.1 square. Is that right? Okay. okay. If I make a writing error here and there, don't worry. Let's look at the principle. Okay. okay. Then the third part would obviously be the cost inside the bracket. Okay. And the cost inside the bracket is now going to be the cost of, let's just look at this equation, oh sorry there must be a minus sign there I think, okay. It's the cost of lambda multiplied by C divided by L. Okay. So it's the cost of lambda and lambda is equal to 0.6751 multiplied by the x direction, which is equal to 0.1, divided by L, which is also 0.1. So that in any case is equal to 1. So the result is cos of lambda. Okay. Okay. So if we multiply these three terms with each other, the solution would be T1. you agree? So T1 is just the, the multiplication of those three terms. Okay, everybody happy so far? Right, okay. Now let's look at the next one. All right. Now we need to get it in the y direction. Let's look at the box again. <laughs> All right. There you go, y direction. There's our z. Yes, x. Okay. So, in the y direction, it looks like that. There's the y, and now the z will again be on the left hand side. That distance there is 120, and the line where we want to get the solution is on that line there, the line BB. Make sense for everybody? Right, so 2 times L2 would be equal to 0.12. When you go and calculate the build number, the build number will now use L2. Okay, not the same one as previously. 
So if we calculate the build number, then it is in this case equal to 0.3243. And with that, we can go and solve A1 and lambda one, uh, 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 2. Okay, so let's use them 2, otherwise we get confused. Okay. Because we are, using, we are using the second direction now. Everything in the 2 direction or in the y direction. Okay. So you can go and solve it. And now the non-dimensionalized time would be 0.124 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7. The t is obviously constant, divided by 0.06 squared. Okay. And the direction p in which we are solving would be the y direction and it would be 0.06 or 60 millimeters. And again, <coughs> we can now go and calculate the three terms, which would give us T2. Again, it's the constant A, that one there, which is now A2, multiplied by the E term, multiplied by the cost term. And again, the direction Y is 0.06 divided by its L, which is also 0.06, so again, that one is going to disappear, and the result is only cos, well, cos of lambda. Okay. Right. In the z direction, the z direction, I'm going to show you on the box just now, see? That direction now 280. Okay. The Z direction, there it is, okay, 280 millimeters, okay, and the X axis is now in this direction, okay, right, okay, and if you look carefully at the temperature that we need to solve, that one there, it is always in the positive direction, so it's positive X, positive Y, and positive Z, so that's the reason why I've selected that corner there. Okay? Everybody happy? Makes sense, okay? Okay, now, before we finish that one, sorry, let's just go back to that one. We need to put in our lines for BB, on which we've solved this thing, okay? So that would be with Y up like that, okay? And Z going in that direction, so that would be along that line there, okay? Does that make sense for everybody? Uh, I'm lying. <laughs> it must be, yeah, it is there, okay, on that line. Okay? Still happy, right, okay. Now, the third one is the C direction. And again, it's the same thing, okay? So now, 2 times L3 is equal to 0.280. We can go through the whole thing again. We calculate the third build number. With that build number, which is not the same than that one, we can calculate A3 and lambda 3. And again, they will not be the same as the other two. Again, we can calculate the non-dimensionalized temperature, 0.124 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7 T divided by 0.14 squared. Right something like that, and again we can take through and go and calculate the three different terms so that we can calculate the last term T3 there. Okay. So, <coughs> let's just come back to this equation. Remember, the solution is going to be the product of the three different terms. So the solution the solution is now going to be 0.5 okay. because the non-dimensionalized temperature 
Okay, remember where that corner should be zero, there it is, we've calculated it as 0.5. So 0.5 should be equal to T1 multiplied by T2 multiplied by T3. Okay. And now, as you can imagine, now it becomes a little bit messy. So 0.5 is now equal to the first term, which is 1.075 multiplied by E to that messy thing there that I'm not going to write down. But in it is a T okay, multiplied by the cos of lambda, which is 0.6751. Okay. And that is the first term. And then there's going to be the second term, and in it is also T, plus the third term, and in it also T. Okay. Then we need to solve T. Okay. And T, I'm not going to solve it, I want you to go and solve it at home. Okay. You can go and solve T, and once you've done that, then there's one very important thing that you need to do. And that is you have to go and check if tolls are all larger than 0.2, because that was the assumption. Okay. So you have to go and check and calculate toll 1, toll 2, and toll 3. And if all of them are larger than 0.2, then you can get away with only the one-term solution. <coughs> right, that is the principle of what we've done, okay. We are not finished yet. <laughs> we are not finished yet, okay. So now we need to put up the, C, the C's. Okay. And the C's were there. Okay. Right, so the intersection of A and B, I've got a ruler here. <laughs> Okay, there's A, oh my goodness, I need another ruler, there's that one. Okay, don't believe me? There they are, okay. So, that's A and B. Where is C? There is C. Okay. See why it's easy to get confused? Okay, let's, let's, let's go through it again. There's the A line, okay? So, up here. There's the B line. I go up like this, okay? And now the C line is there. I'm not yet at this corner. What is the problem? Now, when I used this box over the weekend, I even confused myself even more. Okay. And the, the deal that I've made with my daughter for her making this is that she can get the video of the last lecture to see how absent-minded I was and how confused I was. Okay. <laughs> Who can see the catch? Yep. Isn't it the same plane all over? Okay, so that is the AA plane. Okay, so the AA plane is that one there. Okay, the BB plane is this one here. Okay, and the C one is there. There's no intersection where the three lines cross. And I've, and I've tried everything. Okay, yeah. yep. So I think it's, uh, it's the planes, but it's not the uh, planes that are kind of orthogonal to the surface. They're parallel to the surface, and then they intersect in that point. Okay. Let's look at what is actually going on here and why it is so easy to, <laughs> to get confused. So I need some board space here, so I'm just going to clean this. Okay, remember <coughs> that let's look at the first solution. The first solution is the plane wall like that. Okay. And it is in the x direction. But we have to remember 
A plain wall means it's very, very long in this direction here. So if that is x, then that would be equal to z, but we must also remember this plane wall is an infinite in this direction. So it actually looks like this. Oops. Okay. So that is equal to 2 times L1, okay. and that would be x, and that would be z. Okay, so in terms of a line, we can say yes, we've solved the temperature on that line or on the surface. Okay? And again, you can confuse yourself even more if you try to use the negative directions also. But obviously that solution on that wall, on that plane, is also equal to the solution on the other plane. Okay. Okay. Now what helps is let's look at if we use the product of only two of them. Okay. And the product of only two of the plane walls looks now like this. That would be the y direction, and that would be the x direction, like that, and the z direction would be like that. Okay, so if you can look here in the textbook for figure 437, that is actually the intersection of the two plane walls, like that. Okay. Okay. The intersection of the two plane walls. But still, it is infinite in those directions. So, in terms of the, the A line, the A line would be uh, that surface there. Okay. You agree? In the positive x direction. You all happy? Okay. Now in terms of the Z, the Z direction would be that one there, on that side there. Okay. So it's now a little bit difficult to draw, so let me try to uh, do it like that. So we have the two corners. We've got the one corner like that and the other corner like that. Okay. Let's look at our box again. Okay, like that. We have first solve this temperature on this surface here. Okay. That surface there. Okay. Then in the Z direction, we've now solved it in that direction there. So the intersect at this stage is this line here. That's the intersect, S. Okay. And for that, I even have S's. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that would be for that line there. That's the intersect. Okay, you agree? All happy with that? <laughs> right. And now we can move to the third one. Okay, the third one is in the Z direction. Okay, and in the Z direction would be that one there. And now it get, gives us the intersect of that corner there, that surface there. Okay. Intersect of the three surfaces at last. Now we are at the temperature that we want to solve. Okay? Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, I haven't solved it. Uh, I've put the programming, programming ease. 
One of you did go and solve it. Uh, I just want us to compare programs and then I will give you the right solution on ClickUp uh, hopefully before the end of the day. Okay. So that you have exactly all the correct values of the BOT, the A values, the TAL, etc. And then you can calculate the time, uh, how long it is going to take to get to the temperature where T is equal to zero on the corner. Thank you very much.